Hi, welcome to Team Simplicity, and today we are in conversation with Mr. Rashmi Kumar Shah, and today we are going to get to know about him, about the markets, and about the curious question with everybody, uh, everybody right now, all our fellow investors have on their mind, and we are going to ask him this question, and he is going to tell us why this is happening. He is going to tell us what we should do in near future and the do's and don'ts. So, without further ado. Mr. Shah, please tell us why are the markets going up? Over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nitish. I appreciate you starting the conversation. Yeah, good morning, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. So yes, the markets are at all new time high. Uh, so we need to understand: is this high for short term, medium term, or long term? Or markets are still going to go up? Uh, so I'm going to give a very different perspective. So now, if you look at the market from 2010, correct? Let's say let's look at the market from 2010. From 2010, Nasdaq has given 19% return. If you see here, CAGR, the Sensex has given only 10% return, and Dow Jones has given 11, and Nifty also has given 10% return. So basically, after 2010, the Indian markets have underperformed the global market, the Nasdaq, the technology market. Uh, yes, the Sensex has given CAGR of 14% since 1990, but we are talking about last 12 years. So technically speaking, markets have really not run away. 10% is a decent return, not extraordinary return, correct? Uh, so looking from that perspective, markets are not at very high level, but currently last one month market has gone up by 6,000 points. The Bombay Stock Exchange Index has gone by 6,000 points. But then the, if you take January 1st was as a base, Nifty has given 22% return, NASDAQ has given 21 and Sensec has given 20. So, which is a decent return, I would say that. Nothing extraordinary, correct? When market really becomes extraordinary, you'd get 70, 80, 90% return in a year. That kind of return we don't see. Uh, the only reason people are thinking why markets are high, because uh, the index is at 57,000. Mm, that's why. But if you look at objectively, the markets are not that very high. But still, the markets are doing. Your question in everyone's mind is why markets are doing so good? Why markets are catching up when there is a COVID? Uh, there is a reason for markets are doing well. So let it look at some of the reasons, correct? Reopening trade. So during COVID, the Indian economy had shut down for a couple of months. So it's like this your mood. When you open your business or you go to office in the morning, your mood is good, correct? So we are reopening the economy, uh, so the mood is very good, and the GDP grew by 20% in last quarter. So that's one of the reasons. The main reason is uh, global liquidity. So I'll explain your global liquidity in a different way. So let's say you have only 10,000 rupees bank balance and you go to shopping in a mall. So what you do, you feel poor when you have only 10,000 balance in the bank and you shop less. But if you have 10 lakhs balance in your savings account, uh, your perspective on shopping will be different. So today, the global liquidity is having a like 10 lakh rupees balance in your bank account and you're going to a mall. So you're, you'll go on shopping spree, right? So same, same thing has happened. There's so much liquidity. Uh, this is one of the highest liquidity the Federal Reserve and the central governments of the world have done after World War II. Uh, we have never seen this kind of unprecedented liquidity. They say every fifth dollar, so 20% of new currency was printed in last one year. The third reason is bold reforms taking place in India. Now, this is a India-specific thing, correct? The first two are the global. So in India, the government of in is selling a lot of uh, leasing public sector uh, companies or privatizing pub public sector, then they're getting out of business and they're making a lot of changes so the business private sector can do well. They are bold reforms, which is very good. Uh, and third, fourth thing is tapering in US. Whenever US Federal Reserve stops buying uh, bonds from the market, the emerging markets correct but this time emerging market is not going to correct because the balance sheet of emerging market is very good take for example india india has a 650 billion dollar foreign currency reserve we never had that correct so when india's balance sheet is good um, 
the value stocks and emerging market stocks will do very well when tapering happens and interest rates are low. So we are that's why a lot of FOAs are buying and the dollar is depreciating, rupee is appreciating. And that's another reason. Um, other thing which Modi government has done this year is they have changed the ecosystem, opened up the ecosystem for startups in India. Uh, the largest startup ecosystem in the world is in America, Silicon Valley. The second largest is in China. The third largest is in India. In If you read the papers, recently the news article was there that in the month of August, uh, India received $5 billion, sorry, $8 billion of FDI and uh, venture capital and China received $6 billion. So this is the first time where FDI through venture capital was higher in India than China. The, other thing which is happening is uh, there is a reallocation of uh, investments in emerging market. China normally used to get five times higher allocation than India, but due to the ongoing reforms in the Chinese economy, whereby the government is trying to control uh, and change the rules of the game for big tech companies, there is a sell-off in big tech stocks in China and that money is moving to India because after China, India is the biggest emerging market market in the world and FFIs don't want to miss uh, reduce the allocation to emerging market so they are reducing the allocation to China and increasing the allocation to India that's what's happening but Chinese stock market is going to rebound we will see the rebound in Chinese market in next one year's time uh, so currently Chinese stock market is corrected by 30 percent in last three months or four months uh, the other next reason is global supply chain, correct? The global supply chain, after the COVID happened, uh, every company which thought that they were depending too much on China for their manufactured products, even India was dependent too much on China. So every country is trying to rebalance their supply chain. They want uh, to depend on uh, supplies from three, four countries and not from one country. So that's a good thing where India is going to get more share in the manufactured products worldwide so that change is happening and post covid uh, everything has changed in the world correct after world war ii uh, we had seen a major changes in the global economy same thing is happening after post covid uh, in last hundred years uh, after world war ii this is the first time we are seeing everything is getting reset and re-looked at it and that change is driving the stock market up because what is happening is uh, all small businesses the mo are shrinking and the business is going to bigger companies and bigger companies are doing their profitability has gone up if you look at last one year the india's gdp went up by two percent but the profits of the corporate india went up by 40 to 50 percent so that kind of valuation is also shifting correct so investment so these are the multiple reasons so if you look at this reasons market is not that high market is repricing the stock market which is a good thing and i don't think markets are going to correct too much um, they will consolidate at this level and then they'll go up again now uh, the other the the main reason i said liquidity correct the liquidity uh, so what is liquidity doing? The in bank FD interest rates have come down to 5%, whereas inflation is 7%. So if bank interest rates are 7, inflation is, uh, sorry, bank interest rates are 5 and inflation is 7. So you're getting minus 2% real return. When you're getting minus 2% real return, a lot of FD investors and retired uh, people who are depending on bank regular income are moving to stock market and that this is happening not only in India It's happening everywhere in the world Every part of the world this is happening and this major reallocation is happening This is the biggest driving and this is going to continue for next two three years interest rates are not going to go up uh, In the short term. So that's a good sign uh, Now what you should do as an investor? So the next question happens there are three kinds of investors you're fully invested you're partially invested and you're not at all invested, correct? So if you're fully invested, what you should do is you look at your portfolio, rebalance your portfolio, take out more risky investments, book profit in that and go to quality large caps. 
and rebalance your portfolio. If you don't have international portfolios, you don't have Microsoft, Google, Apple, reallocate money to that. If you don't have Hindustan, Lever, Nestle, those kind of, reallocate the money to that. Reallocate to IT sector. IT sector is going to do well. So rebalance your portfolio if you are fully invested. Now, if you're, but do not exit the market. Do not exit the market uh, with the intention that, you know, I'll sell now and buy at a lower price. You may not get that chance again. Uh, market is not likely to correct more than 5%. I don't think so. 5% is a normal correction and that happens in uh, rotation. Everything doesn't come, to, come down by 5%. Certain stocks come down, certain stocks go up. So don't try to uh, predict the market. If you're partially invested, keep investing. Keep building your portfolio through SIPs. It's a very good thing to do. Now, if you're not at all invested and you have missed the bus or you sold your portfolio last year because of COVID and thought the market is going to crash and you got out of the market, then you need to start entering the market again and build your portfolio through SIPs, which is very important. Every investor, every individual need to have minimum allocation of 40% to direct equity. If you are 30% uh, direct uh, equity mutual funds and if you have 30 years old or 40 years old your allocation should be as high as 70 to 80 percent and only 20 percent should be in ppf and those kind of investments so you need to rebuild the portfolio don't look at um, uh, the pessimistic and the markets are going down and markets will go down i'll buy again don't do that it's a very big mistake so what you should not do in this market so what you should not do in this market is try to time the market. Don't think that you, many people think that they know more than even the Nobel Prize economists, correct? Nobody can predict the market. So don't try to judge the market, say I'll sell now and buy lower. Don't do that. Uh, you'll burn your fingers. Listen, to, don't listen to your friends. Uh, do not discuss investments with your friends and if you made money, don't brag about it. If you didn't make money, don't be pessimistic about it. And do not try to follow the herd mentality. You'll destroy your portfolio. Uh, friends are for friendship. They are not stock market experts. Uh, please do not do that. Uh, which we, This trend we see a lot, correct? Uh, don't invest irrationally or randomly. Like when you go to the airport, you know why you're going, where you're going. Uh, you don't decide suddenly, oh, I'm going to Bangalore. No, no, I'm going to Chennai. No, no, I'm going to Delhi. You don't do that, correct? You know why you're going to the airport. You already have a ticket for that destination and you plan. Same way, your investment should be very planned. Uh, no irrational, random, uh, emotional investment should be done. And don't run after returns. Don't try to chase returns to make... If you have 50% or 100% uh, high risk investment or don't follow in return investments which gave 100% return last year, assuming that they'll give 100% this year. It never works that way. Uh, you need to look at the futuristic trends and look at the valuation, consult a professional and rebalance your portfolio. Do that. Uh, think rationally and put your feet down to the earth. You'll do well. And don't be biased, correct? Don't be bias and look at the data and then invest. You should do very well. I do not see the market correcting sharply. Market will consolidate and further go up because we are, these last 10 years were very bad for us and now we are correcting and that's that's a good thing. So if you have any more questions, feel free to contact us. If anyone in my Pune team members, Mumbai or Rangabad, I appreciate your time and if I miss anything, you can contact us and we'll take it further there. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Nitesh, uh, I appreciate your time and you can summarize or, and we can, we are done then, correct? Thank, thank you, Mr. Shah. That was a wholesome insight that how the entire global is interlinked and how different reforms in China, in India are affecting the rise in the market. and. Whatever it may be, whatever the condition is, we have to still start investing. Don't feel left out. You can still start investing and build a wonderful portfolio. So this is still a very good time for all of you to get into the market and start investing. So for all our fellow investors, don't hold back. Let's start investing. Thank you.
Thank you. And I would like everyone to uh, watch more of this kind of videos on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.